recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Multi Pop Chirol, the hardest to pronounce pop culture podcast on the planet. I'm your host, Brian, here with. I'm Jerry. And we have a very, very special guest in the building, none other than DJ Trackstar from Run the Jewels, smoking yeah. section on Shade 4 5. Trackstar, thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Before we get started, uh, we uh, know that, that you uh, just uh, became a dad, so tell us a little bit about uh, dad life and the newborn. You know, it's, uh, I mean, it's amazing. It's like all the cliches that, uh, you know, it's supposed to be, changes everything, and uh, it's more incredible than, you know, I could have imagined. Uh, I thought I was going to have an easier transition into the sleep, because I'm so used to having terrible sleep hours and all that but sure right. that's quite adjusted. but you know all of the you know it's it's also worth it uh you know she's amazing amina um you know my wife camille has been incredible with her it's cool to watch her become a mom and yeah it's just cool to start a family awesome man congratulations how's the uh, how's the transition been going from uh, la to san diego it's been good um you know as you can see still boxes uh, <laughs> everywhere um, it's, a lot like it's, my probably, it's probably gonna be a multi-week unpacking process. Yeah, we, uh, my wife has a jewelry business, Peace Images Jewelry. Um, and then I've got the wrap fan clothing line. So we run two businesses from home. Plus I'm a hoarder when it comes to wrap memorabilia records, tapes, flyers, posters, everything. So I have a lot of shit. So it's been, it's a bad combination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad combination, uh, having so much shit and moving a lot, but sure. uh, it's worked out great. And you know, Amina, Amina's transition great. Wolfie, our cat, has been a uh, you know more friendly since she's been here. So I guess she likes San Diego better, uh, <laughs> which is interesting. But better vibe. Uh, that's awesome. Um, you want some about this? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I was just wondering, uh, uh, with you having a kid uh, so recently, like how's that affecting you know your tour life? You know how's that going? Is you know is, is there any problems? Is, is it is it how's the, how's the transition? Thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's been amazing timing because we've been mostly off the road since the Lord tour ended almost a year ago. This has right. been by far the lightest year of touring that I've had since, since I moved to Atlanta and started DJ for Mike, uh, okay. regularly. Um, so, you know, it worked out perfectly that I could be here to support Camille during her pregnancy. And, you know, I've been here for most, of, you know, 95% or more of, of every day for Amina, which is great. Um, at some point we're going to get back on the road on a regular basis. And, um, obviously looking forward to it because it's super fun to tour with Mike and Al and the crew. And, um, obviously extremely lucky to get to do what I do. Uh, but I also hate the idea of leaving sure. um, Amina for very long. I've already had, you know, I've, I've had a couple little trips and just being away for two, three, four days, just it's rough, but you know, it's what you got to do to, it's what you got to do to, to buy the diapers. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. And you know, I'm obviously very lucky to get to, to get to make my money touring around doing rap music instead of being away from her for eight hours a day, you know, in a office somewhere or something. So, um, you know, it's, it's got its pluses and minuses, but I haven't really had to deal with real tour life since she's been here. Um, gotcha. Which has really gotcha. been incredible to me because, you know, I, I could have had her at the beginning of 2016 and been gone for 70% of the next 16 months. Right, you know, right. Or 2017, yeah. Because yeah. we were gone for grinding. pretty much all of 2017 and the first four months 2018 were crazy. Oh, definitely, so, and I mean it definitely you know, shows in the, not, and it definitely shows you know, in the, uh, in the pistol and fist uh, video that you made. You know the three years of touring that you guys were grinding it out from festivals to the small clubs. Um, you know, as far as personally, do you have a preference? Uh, yeah. You know, do you prefer to do the festivals? Do you prefer the small clubs? Is there a, like a favorite that you have, or at least favorite? Or I mean, there's, there's nothing like a crowd where everyone there paid because we're the headliners. Yeah. You know, I mean, festivals are great. There's lots of great things about them. Obviously, we're very lucky and I'm happy to be able to do them and sure. be in front of crowds of that size. And we gain a lot of new fans at festivals, which is great and essential to growing, you know, our, our fan base. But there's nothing like, you know, even if it's a tenth as many, 25,000 people 
versus 2,500 who all paid specifically because they know our music and love right. us. It's not, you know, it's not even comparable. Oh, I bet. Um, I bet. So, you know, clubs all day, but there's also, there's all sorts of reasons festivals are a good idea too. So, sure. you know, sure. Um, you know, I, well, I like them both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of those small clubs, I mean, do you, uh, like, what do you think of the progression of the, uh, the fan base from, you know, the first album, you know, y'all, y'all did a tour for the first album versus your last tour. Like, what do you think about the progression of fan, you know, uh, from, from the old days to, to what you guys are doing now? It's been amazing. I mean, you know, obviously just based on numbers, it's incredible, the progress, you know, the progression. Um, you know, I mean, what's wild is when I first got with Mike, it was based you know, at least partially, and this is how I've always kind of operated as a DJ is, you know, wanting to expose people to stuff they might not be on, you know, is when I heard Mike, I was like, this guy's amazing. I wish more people heard him and knew about him. Right. Mm -hmm. Really, really incredible to spend the last 10 years watching continuously more and more, you know, I, I was just like, it'd be good for the world if more of the world heard what this guy has to say. And, you know, we've gone from where we were at to now Mike's got a Netflix show and yeah, however many many yeah. trillions of Instagram followers. And, you know, his, you know, he's on, every, you know, he's on TV, you know, so it's incredible. And Elle's the same way. Elle's an unbelievable, brilliant guy who thinks about the world and cares about people in ways that are, you know, above and beyond most, most people, you know? So the, the louder their voices get, is better obviously for us as a band better for me as you know the guy working with and for these guys mm -hmm. but it's just it's better for everybody you know it's it's and that's one of the blessings of working with this group for me is i'd have to be thankful for the career i have traveling making money getting exposure touring doing rap music i'd have to be thankful even if i wasn't a big fan of the group you know <laughs> i mean it's still yeah, right, sad too. right and the fact that you know, the, the, the fact that I've been listening to Elle since high school and Mike was my favorite rapper before I ever met him or DJed for him. I mean, what the fuck, you know? It's, <laughs> uh, Just living the dream, it's man. It's really Just incredible, the dream. you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, do it, doing one show which, with each of those guys separately would have been a pretty amazing, like, cap on my career if that was, like, <laughs> the, the yeah. highest it got, you know? So... Mm -hmm. No doubt, no doubt, no. I remember the very first time I saw you guys, it was in uh, Carboro, and you were you were winding up. Uh, uh, RTJ Two was just about to come out, and that was the uh, that was the tour where you know they opened up for each other, and it was amazing to me because I loved Killer Mike and I loved yeah, LP, man. and they did their own sets, and then they came together and did an amazing show, you know, together, and it blew my mind, and you know that's what just got me thinking about the progression of the uh, the, the fan base is that like. Back then, they were hanging out. Well, they I know they'll hang out when they can, but they were hanging out with like maybe seven, eight people after the show, you know, like everybody else had left. And they were so cool and so accommodating yeah. about coming out and, yeah. you know, just hanging around the merch booth and talking to anybody that wanted to talk to them. It was amazing. I mean, I know you can't really get that experience yeah. now. I, uh, I actually, just, I actually, I actually remember that exact show. Yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> No, it was, yeah. it, it was amazing. My, my buddy, uh, my yeah. buddy, Joni, um, he's loved LP since the beginning of time. <laughs> and I've got so, I've got some great pictures of him, like actually talking mm. and rapping with him. It, it, it was a great Haven't we all. Both of us. Yeah, actually Cat's Cradle is a place that I bring up when I talk about how it's awesome to have the bigger fan base, but there's yeah. certain venues I miss that will just never play again. Right. Either right. Cause I love them right. for what it was or just cause you know, we played there four years in a row. So I've got good memories for it. it's like, pretty unlikely we'll ever play cat's cradle again but between run the jewel stuff and me and mike going on tour with other people we played right. cat's cradle like, like six times in four years or something like that and it just got familiar and it was just like oh good cat's cradle again so then, <laughs> right but yeah, no we'll never I be mean, back <laughs> between that and fillmore too yeah. that's those are two of our favorite spots as well so uh no we would love love cat's cradle maybe yeah. uh, maybe uh, maybe a secret show sometime in the future who knows <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, hopefully someone could put something like that together. But yeah, that 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 and that tour with uh, with with us opening up for ourselves, 
that was like the illest thing ever. When they told me that's what we were doing, mm-hmm. I, just, I flipped out because I would never have thought of it. And if I had thought of it, I never would have thought anyone would do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, right. And it was just so amazing. Because I immediately put myself in the crowd and thought about how, I would, you know, that's what I would want if I was going to see a Killer Mike and LP show. And I also like Run the Jewels, but I like Killer Mike and LP. I'd be, you know, I wouldn't want to just see Run the Jewels, right? Let me, let me get some solo stuff. So the fact that we did all of it was incredible. Although it was weird for me and Mike to do half an hour and then have a half an hour off and then like right when our sweat dries. Go back. <laughs> that was weird, but it was, I mean, that tour was incredible, you know. Shouts out to Despot and Mr. Motherfucking Esquire, which, you know, and that was a super fun tour too. That was the first time that Mike and L and I went out on the road together for an extended period. So that was, yeah, super fun. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, you know, as you know, we have a, a, a big pop culture following. We cover everything from Marvel movies, uh, music, hip hop, of course. We're big hip hop heads. Um, so we saw recently that you got to meet uh, Ant Man himself, Paul Rudd. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit how, how about uh, how that went down? Yeah, so uh, a couple of funny things about that. One is, uh, you know, I got to be completely honest. I'm not a big comic book guy. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's funny because everyone sees the picture and they bring up Ant-Man. <laughs> and I literally, like, forgot that he played Ant-Man or whatever. Uh-huh. And I'm like, you mean the guy from Clueless, right? That's, that's <laughs> a, from, what, from What Hot American Summer? That's, the, you know, from all the... From all the great, you know, hilarious movies from the last, no, oh man, right. man, right. Uh, so that's been funny because that's everyone else's point of reference. <laughs> uh, but it's it's really funny because I've been saying as like, as, as pretty much a joke uh, for the last like year, I just said it once and thought it was funny. So I've been repeating that Paul Rudd was my favorite white person that I've never met before. <laughs> yeah. um, and now he's not anymore because I've met him. <laughs> uh, but it was funny because uh, uh, Run, the, Run the Jewels booking agent came back to uh, the trailer after the show. And made this amazing dude named Sam Hunt. And he said, Paul Rudd seemed to enjoy the show. He was up there tapping his foot. And I was already, I was having a conversation. I just turned, I was just like, stop. I was like, did you just say Paul Rudd's here? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's up there. I was like, point him out to me. Where is he? I'm going to go meet him and get a photograph with him. I'm <laughs> like, I love this Yes. And we went in, it was, you know, a fun adventure, you know, trying to find Paul Rudd and then waiting for people to stop talking to him. And, uh, unfortunately, I didn't get much of a chance to talk to him because it was right when Foo, we were opening up for the Foo Fighters. Gotcha. And it was right when the Foo Fighters started, who I would assume is who Paul was there to see, you know, at yeah, least some of them jamming out. Want to talk yeah, off during the <laughs> Foo Fighters show. So I just got the flick and said hello. Um, but yeah, that was awesome to meet him. Uh, so now, so now I'm my number one white person I've ever met. Now that I've met you guys, of course, <laughs> is uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, you know, either Steve Car- Steve Carell or Bill Murray, probably. Nice. Those are two good ones right there. Yes, Michael oh, Scott. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, Michael Scott and uh, good old yeah. Peter Bankman. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I know you said you weren't into my, comics, but my, my, my wife and I watched. Six to eight hours of the office a day, every day. Yes. So do we. Yes. Perfect. We we just did a uh, office versus Parks and Rec uh, two parter. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're still at odds. Nothing was resolved. Oh yeah. Um. And so. Oh, we amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had people argue about it, so now we have to in, a, in the next couple of months we have to record another you know I've, Office and Parks and Rec episode. So we'd love to have you back for the Office part of it. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've only seen a few episodes of Parks and Rec, but I like it. I don't watch a lot of TV. I mostly just watch The Office. Nothing wrong with um, that. Right. <laughs> but it's just incredible how none of the episodes ever get old at all to either me or my wife. We just, every time, they make us laugh. It's incredible. But uh, going back to the, uh, I know you said you, you weren't really yeah, into comics, movies. but you know. I uh, blog you, all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You see the uh, the variants back here. Uh, is there uh, any word on a, a new one? Have you heard anything? I have not heard anything. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, despite, uh, despite not being into comics, obviously I had to collect all of those. Oh yeah. Uh, and I tried to get most of the hip hop, you know, again, I'm a hoarder and a collector. Of right. Mm-hmm. Stuff, so. I tried to get most of the, uh, the, uh, 
the, the, the hip hop variants period that were coming out, even if they weren't on the jewels. Actually, that box, I think that's that box right there. Ah, nice. nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, I mean, it was, it was awesome to see them all, um, you know, the run the jewels as well as the other hip hop ones, but I haven't heard anything about a new one. I mean, the partnership or, you know, friendship between run the jewels and Marvel seems to be pretty, pretty good since our stuff keeps popping up in their stuff. Yep. So I would, got to imagine there's more stuff coming but i yeah i can't i don't have any scoops for you i haven't heard anything <laughs> it's all right when you do when you do you know what to come to first <laughs> maybe maybe you have maybe you'll have a personal scoop for me do you see mike yeah. and l signing any of those uh do i see them signing them oh yeah 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 i made them sign mine i'm pretty i'm pretty sure I'm gonna sign <laughs> it's always hard to decide what to ask them to sign because since i collect everything and i keep i mean i I keep posters from every show and I've probably got 15 signed things by each of them already. <laughs> but you know, my, my, my hoarding brain wants to get them to sign everything. Right. It's like, no, these are your friends, man. You can't make them just sign stuff all day long on tour. I just can't ask for their autograph every day. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, cert, cert, certain pieces, Certain pieces, or, or like if I see him signing a stack of records or whatever, I'll like try and like just slip one of mine in there and then slip it back out of the signed pile. Uh, <laughs> but you know, can you can you make that out to track? You know, it's, a, it's a fun relationship with them because you know we are friends. We're, we're we're friends and we're coworkers of mutual respect. You know, um, but also, I mean, they're fans of each other, and I've I've been fans of both of them for such a long time. You know, it's like. It's it's fun and it's it's a cool dynamic and you know I still definitely have moments where I'm like, yo man, that's that's LP from Company Flow, bro. You realize who we're saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then I want to turn to Al and be like, you you remember remember fucking Stagonia, and like the whole world and you know Pledge Allegiance. That's that guy. You know, <laughs> have, have you seen Trigger Warning? You know, and it's uh. <laughs> You know, it's fun. And I'm, 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 I'm just so lucky to get to run around with dudes that I admire and, and respect um, in addition to, you know, having fun with and, and having you know, a good friendship with. You know, they're, they're really great guys. And uh, I say this off camera too. These aren't just nice things I say <laughs> for public. <record. laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but before we wrap up, uh, we know we'd love for you to plug what you got going on this year with uh, with uh, Rap Fan as well as um, the smoking section on Shade 4 or 5. What can we expect in 2019 from you? Sure. Well, you know, it's, it's going to be cool being off the road. And uh, once I get settled in the new house, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be a pretty productive year for me. You know, having, I mean, obviously less time with Amina, uh, having to change her diaper all the time and stuff. But having more time to work on my own stuff a little bit while I wait for RTJ four and for us to get back on the road. Um, but rap fan, you know, I've always got new designs coming and stuff. Uh, obviously I'm not a very good businessman. Otherwise I'd be wearing it right now to advertise, uh, but you know, go buy some LOM clothing from hollow to Don. Uh, and this is Nike. Don't, don't buy stuff from Nike. Uh, I'm just kidding. Buy stuff from Nike. I do it sometimes. Um, but yeah, you know, the, uh, the, the, the pistol and fist mixtape, um, the mega mix, you know, the video versions, uh, been on YouTube for a couple of months now and you know, I'm super proud of it. That was a really fun project to do. Um, and I'm actually going to drop the audio on my SoundCloud, uh, I think this week actually. And then the smoking section every Friday on shade 45, uh, super fun to do. Um, you know, they give me leeway to play whatever I want. So I play, you know, a lot of rap music by people you've heard of, but a lot of rap music by people you haven't, you know, people, people that I'm familiar with, or, you know, I mean, I love just messing around on SoundCloud and finding some dude with 29 SoundCloud followers and 16 plays on a song. But if I like the song, you know, I, I run it, you know, music discovery has just always been such a big part of my life. Um, and I like stumbling upon it. I don't, one of the most annoying parts of being a DJ is how much people send music to me. Twenty percent right. of the time, I'm super excited to get you know some music, but eighty percent of the time, it's like, no oh, man, I'd rather find it, and then I you know, and then you view it in a different way. Um, so you know, that's that's a fun part of my week. Every week is just scrolling through SoundCloud and you know whatever other sites and finding uh you know two two dope boys and all the other sites that I rely on and finding uh 
finding cool shit to play every week. Um, so yeah, that's Friday nights on Shade 45, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah, that rap fan. Um, you know, I got some mixtapes that I'm hoping to get out this year, but I've been hoping to get them out for a couple of years. But we've been on the road, so I don't want to. I don't want to promo them too soon and then have it take another couple of years. I hate, right. hate being that guy. Um, it's coming. Yeah, <laughs> raising, raising my daughter and enjoying San Diego. You know, we're newly back in San Diego, so that's fun. Yeah, yeah, so it's gonna be a good year. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, you know, once again, seriously, on behalf of myself and, and uh, Jay Don, Jerry, thank you so much for joining us on here today. And uh, we'll definitely catch up with you throughout the year. You know, you've been great at responding to us on Instagram. Um, and, uh, you know, we're big fans and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you. We're looking forward to RTJ4, seeing you on tour again. Uh, congrats again on being a dad. Um, and we'll definitely be in touch. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is fun for sure. Appreciate you. All right, sounds good, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to another episode of Pop Culture as Fuck, presented by Multipoptural. Be sure to check us out at our website for all the latest news and notes. You can find us at www.popcultureaf.com or multipoptural.com. And we'll see you next week, you filthy animals. Yes! Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.